The original R8 was something of a game changer for Audi when it hit the road in 2007. With its wild supercar looks, mid-engine layout and scorching performance, the R8 was a far cry from the sensible, solid and ever so slightly staid saloons that were Audi's stock in trade. Now there's an all new R8 that promises to be even more exciting and desirable. Ok, so it doesn't look much different to the old car. However, extensive use of aluminium means it's around 15% lighter, while the 5.2 litre V10 in this flagship plus model pumps out a stonking 602 brake horsepower. Uprated suspension and new Quattro four-wheel drive system promise even sharper handling too. But is the new R8 good enough to beat the ultimate everyday supercar, the Porsche 911 Turbo S? Porsche has just revealed an even more powerful facelifted version, but the current car is hardly short on firepower. Its 3.8 litre twin turbo flat 6 pumps out 552 brake horsepower and a monstrous 750 newton metres of torque. Of course, power is nothing without control, which explains the high-tech 911's four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering and adaptive aerodynamics. In these days of downsized turbocharged engines, you've got to give credit to Audi for sticking with a big 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10. It's a bit of a dinosaur, but it's an amazing engine at the same time. It delivers 602 horsepower and it revs to an amazing 8,500 RPM. And then there's the noise. Just listen to this. Oh, that is a proper supercar noise and it's proper supercar performance as well. It doesn't have the low down punch of the turbocharged Porsche engine, but once it, the revs rise above about 4,000 RPM, this car just flies. And it's helped by the gearbox as well, this seven speed twin clutch S-Tronic. It can be a little clunky, sort of a low speed around town, but once it's in its dynamic setting, the upshifts are just seamless and instantaneous. And then you get this lovely little blip on the downshifts and a little crackle from the exhaust. It's just, well, it adds to the drama of this car. It just, it just makes it so much fun to drive. Now, in the past, a lot of fast Audis They've gone very quick down the straights and because they've got quattro four-wheel drive there's lots of traction but they haven't involved the driver as much as they could. This R8 it's lighter than the old one and it feels much more agile. The steering certainly in dynamic setting there's weight to it. It's not not brimming with feedback it's not quite as good as the Porsche setup in that respect but it's really quick it's direct and there's just this feeling that the car you can trust it you can place it accurately in the corners and it's it feels planted and yet give the throttle a little lift and it the car just adjusts its line it tucks in you, there's a feeling that you've got options in mid corner it just it's remarkably involving for a, a fast audi it's very good indeed yet when you want to take it easy the audi can play executive saloon as well now admittedly our cars fitted with the 1600 pound adaptive dampers but when you've spent 140,000 pounds on a car what's an extra 1600 quid and in comfort mode, they do a remarkable job. The car just irons out bumps and imperfections. There's, there's a strange kind of wallowy feeling over speed bumps, but day to day, it's just really comfortable and wind noise is pretty well suppressed. I mean, the only thing that is really intrusive is the tire noise and the engine, you know, well, I'm happy for that to be intrusive because it sounds so good. And of course, in the dry at least, there's just bags of grip. You can really lean on the car. <laughs> And with the Quattro all-wheel drive, you've got incredible traction out of the corners as well. It's just, <laughs> well, it's quite impressive. And like most modern supercars, you've got various different driver settings you can choose from. So I've got Drive Select here, which gives me comfort, auto, dynamic and individual, where I can set the steering, suspension, throttle parameters. There's also a special ESP performance mode so I can select from dry, wet and snow settings and it just gives the ESP a little bit of leeway so you get a bit of slip out of corners or of course you can switch everything off and uh, you're on your own then. Okay, get behind the wheel of the Porsche and the first thing you notice is how quiet it is compared to the, uh, the Audi. The 3.8 litre twin turbo flat six, it's just nowhere near as intrusive as the, the Audi's howling V10. It's not short of performance with 550 odd horsepower. It's a little bit behind the, uh, the Audi on outright power, but with 750 newton meters of torque, it's about 200 newton meters up. And while it's not as loud, there's no denying it's fast. Peak torque comes in at around 2000 RPM and you put your foot down and oh my word, it just enters warp drive. It's just, 
insanely fast. In the real world, when you're kind of in the wrong gear at the wrong time and you just want to get going quickly, the Porsche just flies. The Audi wouldn't see which way it went, but it's nowhere near as dramatic. You don't get that sense of excitement. The hairs on the back of your neck don't stand up when you hear the, um, the engine get towards the red line. It's much, much more subdued. In the corners, the Porsche is a slightly different character too. There's more weight to the steering, more feedback, and you're aware that the engine is hanging out over the back axle. It's just there constantly reminding you of the car's handling balance, but the four-wheel drive does a fine job of pulling you out of corners. There's so much traction, and it's really rewarding to drive. It's not ultimately as exciting as the, the Audi because you don't get the noise, the same sensations of speed, but it's very, very effective. And what you lose in outright excitement, you make up for with just composure and an everyday usability. This is a car that will happily sit in traffic for hours on end or pounding up and down the motorway. And you just wouldn't, it wouldn't tire you out at all. And yet there's this reserve of performance when you want to go. It's a remarkable piece of kit. And the frightening thing is Porsche have just revealed there's an even faster Turbo S coming out soon. So, wow, how fast is that gonna be? Okay, so both the Audi and Porsche are huge fun to drive. But what you really want to know is which is faster. It looks like a drag race is in order. Right, so here we are on the start line. I reckon this is going to be pretty closely matched. So both makers, Porsche and Audi, claim around just over three seconds for the 0 to 62 sprint. Um, the Audi's got a bit more power, a bit lighter. The Porsche, more torque, and it's got that rearward weight bar with so the engine over the rear axle, so it should have lots of traction. So let's see how we get on. Here we go. And go. Oh, oh the Porsche's got a lead. My word, that Porsche is fast. My word! That Porsche just took off like a rocket! How on earth does it do that? I mean, this is no slouch, but blimey! That's bonkers. That's genuinely bonkers. And they're going to make a faster one! Wow! So the Audi was just pipped by the Porsche, but it was close. According to our test gear, the R8 sprinted from 0 to 60 mph in 2.9 seconds, while the 911 was a tenth ahead with a time of unbelievably 2.8 seconds. Of course, there's more to these cars than mere numbers. With its stunning looks, ear-splitting soundtrack and involving handling, the Audi just has the edge over the Porsche. However, the R8 can't rest on its laurels, because that revised 911 Turbo S is just around the corner. To watch a track battle between the Nissan GTR and the classic R34 Skyline, click the video on the left. To watch a track battle between the Honda Civic Type R and the Honda Fireblade Superbike, click the video on the right. Click the play icon to watch our latest video and click on our logo to subscribe.